ESPN Speed World welcomes you live on a beautiful Sunday afternoon to Darlington Raceway in South Carolina and our coverage of the NASCAR Winston Cup Trans South Financial 400. Entering this fifth event of the 1997 NASCAR Winston Cup season, Dale Jarrett has a 29-point lead on defending series champ Terry Labonte. Jeff Gordon slipped to fourth after Atlanta's last place finish. The top five separated by 101 points. Who has the better car? Well, it's going to be the largest starting field in the history of this race. 43 cars and drivers set to go in this 400-mile event. Here's the starting lineup. On the pole will be Dale Jarrett, second straight pole here at Darlington, alongside Ricky Craven, his 68th race. Bobby Labonte will start third. It's his fourth, uh, his uh, fourth finish at Atlanta that has moved him up in the point standings. And Jeff Bodine, four Darlington poles here. Mark Martin starts fifth. He has one Darlington win. Jeff Burton, two top fives in 1997. Then Hud Strickland starts seventh. He was second in last September's Southern 500. Ernie Irvin drove his first race in the number 28 car here in September of 93. Sterling Marlin, the 95 winner of this event, starts ninth alongside Jeff Gordon, who's looking for a record four straight. Starting 11th will be Lake Speed. His only Winston Cup win was here in 88. And Terry Labonte, first Winston Cup win was here in 1980. Starting 13th will be Ken Schrader and Gary Bradbury starting in 14th spot. Back in row eight, we find Rusty Wallace in the Miller Ford, Ricky Rudd on the outside. Row nine is Mike Wallace and Bill Elliott. Row 10, Jeremy Mayfield and Dave Marcus. Then comes Ted Musgrave and David Green. Morgan Shepard, his great run in Atlanta. We'll start 23rd and Greg Sachs beside him. Derek Cope and Jimmy Spencer make up the next row, and Michael Waltrip and Kyle Petty, 27th and 28th. Then starting in 29th position will be Phil Parsons, who is substituting for Joe Nemechek. Kenny Wallace will start in 30th position. Back in the 16th row, we have Brett Bodine and Chad Little. John Andretti and Mike Skinner will go from the next row. Starting in the 18th row, Robert Presley and Johnny Benson. 37th starter is Bobby Hillen and the pole sitter from Atlanta, Robbie Gordon, who was the slowest qualifier to get in the field. These next drivers got in on provisionals, Bobby Hamilton and Ward Burton. Also, Daryl Waltrip and Rick Mast. And choosing a champion's provisional to get into the field, Dale Earnhardt. He'll start in 43rd. We are set to go for the final time. The green is about to fly here on this part of the racetrack. A great crowd is on hand. Beautiful weather. And the Trans-South Financial 400 is underway. Joseph McQuillan from Trans-South waiting for the final time on this racetrack in this great configuration. Hamilton has crashed here in the early going. The car just off of corner number four near the entrance to the pit area, but Hamilton has the STP Pontiac running again. Looks like there's some damage to the left front, Bob. And he's also flattened the right side. And what caused Hamilton's encounter with the wall? I don't know. The, it's hard to tell. The car was sideways. When he tried to correct it, it went back up and banged the wall, but Another car in front of him was right down on the apron. The right racetrack down on the apron and is certainly experiencing problems here in the early going. Want we'll to check some speeds at the line and just see which of the cars right now are the fastest. But we have a problem on the racetrack. We see Mike Wallace up against the wall in the Span Chevrolet. And NASCAR has stolen the caution flag. Car up against the outside wall coming down the straightaway. Now he goes to the inside, but there is damage to the spam car. And Mike Wallace brings out the third caution already. Here's the replay. Let's see what happened. 
Well, we don't see what caused him to get up in the wall. We see him in the wall, but and we see that the 75 car oh. gets in the back of the 81, and Greg Saxon, the 20, just about ran in the back of Rick Mast. He sure did. He had to take quick evasive action to avoid. Looks like it just looks like it just yeah. went right. Looks like there's some debris or maybe a punctured tire or something. Of course, that was his brother, Kenny Wallace, in car number 81 right behind him. So he backed off, and as Benny said, Rick Mast in the 75 didn't get backed off quite as quick. Well, we've got pit stops coming up. They've run 27, finishing 28 laps here right now. So everybody coming down pit road. Dale Earnhardt may stay out there and then believe the race. That's Mike Wallace. Jerry Punch with more on the Marlins situation. Well, we figured out what happened to Sterling and where the water came from. A moment ago, they raised the hood trying to think it may be an engine problem, but this was sticking in the radiator. This, uh, what's left of a screwdriver, was sticking all the way through the front of the radiator like someone had thrown a spear through it. This thing put a big hole in the radiator. That's where the water came out, and that's why they're here trying to fix it, and hopefully they did not hurt the motor in the Kodak Chevrolet. Let's go to John Turner. hit the wall going into turn three. And the driver going for four in a row. And there's another crash as Kyle Petty and David Green have come together. So there may be some kind of oil or something. Up Damn it, Dennis, you got to tell him what to do to you. Knows how to race this track. We can figure out what, uh, what happened here. Well, here we see the leader, Jeff Gordon. As he goes in the corner, it's almost like Dale Jarrett last fall. He goes in the corner, and all of a sudden, now the car is supposed to turn left, and it just continues going right up in the wall, and we see the contact with the wall. If we'd had radio contact with him, we probably would have said, I'm in the wall. And then after Jeff Gordon scraped the wall up in that area of the track, then we had the crash involving Petty and Green. Well... Kyle Petty spins out, and David Green, he's got all four wheels locked up, cannot get the car stopped, and right in the side of Kyle Petty. Did you see how Earnhardt, he got by down on the inside. He was almost in that wreck. But he did get a little bit of damage, apparently, from the incident at the rear of the car. He comes down, and yeah, you can see there on the right. I saw sideways and just saw a big 44, and, you know, I got on the brakes, and I... Uh, I guess I forgot we're running about 50 or 60. And Dale Jarrett's in the wall. And I had to break to the floor and ran right into Dale Earnhardt. Problem on the track, guys. Jarrett's in the wall. So is Robert Presley. He makes one complete spin. Now two complete spins. And the car stops at the bottom of the racetrack. Not a funny situation for the Cartoon Network car. And again, we have caution for only the, for the fifth time in just the first 48 laps. And there's Gary Bradbury. He stops against the wall. Wow. All up in three. I don't think he hit it too hard, Bob, but we'll see. We Same can... situation as Jeff Gordon. Yeah. Goes in the corner, and there we see the 29 car spin. And Ricky Craven runs in the back of the 99 car. Here comes Hutt Strickland by Craven. I think Je uh, Jared's car looks about like Jeff Gordon's car. I think he's brushed the wall with the tires. He has flattened it like we, uh, we saw Mike Wallace's car, certainly. Here once again from the Pennzoil copter cam. We'll take a look at this again. Presley is sideways here. Hut Strickland taking evasive action and Ernie Urban bobbling there as he hit the brakes. <laughs> Apparently they didn't get all the oil cleaned off up there or something, however. He says that you got to come in at just the right speed. Apparently, or you're going to slide. And so when Mike came in, he just started sliding. So he had to go back out onto the racetrack. We got a crash coming out of turn number two. And it looks Dave like it's Marcus. Dave Marcus. Dave Marcus hits the wall coming out of turn two. The car sliding to the inside, making contact with the inside wall. And the caution is waving for the seventh time this afternoon. Jeff Burton said, no, got it. I had to have me a good lead at it. Anybody breathing down my neck now? We're close together and a couple of lap cars are there, too. Pretty excited just a couple of laps ago when Jared went by. Urban and Jeff, Jeff Burton and Jeff Gordon at the same time. Whoop, we have a car spinning. Hard contact into the backstretch inside wall. Ricky 
Jackie Craven and Robert Presley are in. This time the car's behind him. It's slow. Rusty Wallace had to take evasive action there. He was headed right for the very badly damaged car of Presley. Some very bad damage to it. Here it is again from our camera in turn two. And Presley, it looked like the back end just got out from under him, and Craven had committed to go down to the inside of him, and both of them just carried right into the inside wall. It's like Craven was a victim of circumstances there. Just was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And Presley limps as he gets out of the car, is helped by a NASCAR official. And the 29 car now has an engine fire. Oh, my goodness gracious. There the firemen get there. Here's Bill. And we'll watch again as they come off the corner, and we just see heavy contact. It looks like one car in that crash. That's how closely tied together they were. But actually, as we can see, two cars, heavy contact to the inside wall. Ricky Craven and the 29 car. He slid across the entire track at the outside wall and then came to rest in the middle of the track. All right, let's ride along with Craven and listen. And there we see the traffic. Who's it going to be an advantage to? dollars of Unical bonus money and he'll pick up the ten thousand dollars in the Winston Cup leader bonus if he wins this race because he will also be the points leader. Here goes Michael oh. Musgrave down on the inside trying to take the lead. Nope he'll have to back off. Musgrave has never won a NASCAR Winston Cup race. There's Jared who is outside. Boy those cars slipping and sliding right now. I think Jared's tires are completely gone. quite a bit of money to Jack Roush race as well and put Musgrave on the winner circle plan in NASCAR. Here you go, Musgrave got another great run. And on makes the pass, however. There are now six laps to go. Can Jared hold off this challenge by Ken Musgrave and win his second race of the year? The interval grows a little bit. Here's where Musgrave really has been getting a great run. Let's see if he does it once again. Once again, he gets off that corner very, very well. And again, they're approaching some slower traffic ahead. They'll have to move around it before this race is over. Who's it going to favor? That traffic, it's hard to say. Depends on how they catch him, where they catch him on the racetrack. Those drivers fighting for position as well. Musgrave is definitely better coming off of turn four. It seemed to be pretty equal in turns one and two. Here he's right on his bumper this time coming off of there. Close in the gap. Let's see what he does coming onto the straightaway. Takes a look to the inside. Four laps to go. He wants to get on the outside of Jared. He wants to get out there. Can he? No, he can't. Body didn't know that he was going to slow down that much going into the turn. And Musgrave got another good run. Let's see, can he do it this time? Jarrett just has too much straightaway speed. Musgrave gets the good run coming off the corner, but Dale is able to stay off the challenge in the straightaway. Here, another good run by Musgrave. Three, three left to go, two and a half. Terry Labonte, they put him a lap down in 14. There are 13 cars on the lead lap now. Once again, Musgrave really getting off the fourth corner, but he just can't get the inside position. Hi, everybody. I'm Darren Detitian in the TSN Newsroom, and we'll get you immediately back to the NASCAR race. Uh, coming up next, we'll take you out to Halifax for the CIAU men's basketball final. That's set to begin in just a few minutes' time, and Brendan Connor is standing by. All right, thank you. And the Metro Center is starting to fill up. You can hear the band behind me. The 
atmosphere is starting to warm up as well as Uvic, the Vikes from the West Coast, are here. And so is McMaster once again. McMaster against University of Victoria in the National Men's Basketball Final. McMaster has been here five straight years. Twice they have lost in the final. They would love to go away winners this time. The Vikings have the player of the year in Eric Heinrichsen. Titus Channer of Mac, Eric Heinrichsen of Vic. It'll be great. Let's go back to Darlington, South Carolina. This is where Musgrave has been getting his good runs. Let's see how he handles it this time. Off of the corner. He looks to the inside once again, but off the corner as they come to the line. It is Dale Jarrett winning the Trans-South Financial 400 by just about a car length on Ted Musgrave. It's Dale Jarrett's second win of 1997, his first Darlington victory in his 19th start. Here's John Curtin with Todd Perry.